All right, here we go. Bobby Angelo making his way down to the cage. And now let's introduce the fighters for our co-main event of the evening, making his way to the blue corner. Bobby Angelo. So when I got here, uh, about an hour or so before fight time, I came here, collected my thoughts, put my, set my bag down, and Bobby was sitting behind me. And uh, he introduced himself to me, and he said, hey, Brian, I'm Bobby, I'm fighting tonight. And I said, well, it's great, can't wait. I go, where you been? He goes, well, I've been out of the game for a couple of years, but I've just been kind of sitting back watching. He's very complimentary of you, he looks up to you. What a gentleman, it's really all I can say. Stand up, you know, just a polite guy, gentleman. He was here, just kind of relaxing, chilling. I'm sure right now he's in the frame of mind for seek and destroy, but I was really impressed when I met him earlier tonight. Seems like just a really good dude. He has been away a little while. You know, he's been training consistently. He was going to try to take a kickboxing fight. You know, fights have fallen through because of injuries to opponents and different things, different drops. You know, so he's happy to be back in here. This young man has lightning in the end of his hands. Um, you know, uh, if he can lay hands on Jake Cervantes, it might be a bad night for Jake Cervantes. That being said, Jake Cervantes is a very well-rounded striker with both hands and feet. So I think the name of the game for them is going to be distance. Can it be a, a, a punching game for Bobby, or can it be a distance kicking and punching game for Jake? Yeah, and you're right, Will. Crowd is really into Bobby Angelo as he makes his way around the cage here. And here we go, Mr. Jake Cervantes is entering the back of the room from Brian Bury Jiu-Jitsu. Again, you know, his nickname is the Marksman. You know, and all about accuracy. And his opponent making pinpoint. his way to the red corner. Jake Cifontes. You know, it just, it seems like just yesterday, this young man was having his first fight, and I remember him surprising the hell out of me because coming from Brian Bury Jiu-Jitsu, we know the ground game's going to be good, but I really remember kind of being taken aback by how well-rounded his striking was. And that's what we see from all of the fighters from from Brian Bu Bury, you, you kind of you, you think you're gonna get a, a, a certain style. We're gonna switch it up. You'll see striking. You'll see ground. You just don't know. Very well rounded, but they're always so well coached and always so well prepared. And you need that going into a title fight. Both these guys are young lions. They're young dogs. Yep. You know, they're respectful. They're they're humble martial artists, and uh, you know they're gonna really put on a show here for us and the fans tonight. Well, how do you handicap? this this match what's each superpower I, I really think you know the advantage for jake is distance and striking changes level changes uh you know differences with the hands and the feet with bobby it's going to be the forward pressure trying to corner jake against cage and make it a boxing match in a phone booth well, we got a saint patty's day extravaganza here we're, we, we're lucky to be here and i I'm so appreciative of everybody watching, as is Will. Thank you guys for watching Cage Wars 57. We're live here at Rivers Casino and Resort in Schenectady on Stimulus.com, our co-main event. You can hear it. There's a lot of excitement generating, a lot of buzz here in the building. It's been ramping up for hours. The cra it's been a long night, but the crowd has not lost any of their fervor, any of their interest, that's for sure. You know, and if you have not been to a Cage Wars event and you watch them at home, hey, man, I know it's free. But there is nothing yeah. like being in the arena, being close to the cage, seeing these athletes, hearing what goes on, hearing the strikes, hearing the mass of humanity run into the cage in front of you. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just a totally different experience. Get here, buy tickets, cagewarsmma.com, Philadelphia, then Schenectady. Two weeks back to back. They sell out every single time. As soon as you see on the socials that Cage Wars tickets are on sale, Scoop them up. Follow us, Cage Wars MMA. If you're watching on Stimulus, find out when the next one is. If you've yet to make one, you will love it. You know, Jake definitely seems to be the, the rangier, longer fighter. I, I might give the strength advantage to Robbie Angelo. We will see. We're going to bring it up to Mike Favo for the official introduction. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we move on to our co-main event of the evening and our second of th three championship fights on the card for Cage Wars 57, scheduled for three three-minute rounds. It is for the USMTA Lightweight Championship. This championship fight is sanctioned by the United States Muay Thai Association. Executive Director Ed Kenner is in attendance. 
Introducing first fighting out of the blue corner. He weighed in yesterday on 155 pounds, representing Team Zhukau out of Scotia, New York, Bobby Angelo. His opponent standing cross cage, fighting out of the red corner. He also weighed in last night at 155 pounds. Representing Brian Bury, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu out of Waterfleet, New York, the Muxman, Jake Sifontes. <laughs> Jake Sifontes just looks like an athlete, doesn't he? He looks athletic. Been through the rules in the locker room. Wants to be my commands all time. Wants to take the gloves all time. If you want to touch gloves, do it now. Do what you both And the man in charge of our second championship fight of the night is Dan Mergliata. And now you'll notice Bobby Angelo coming out in the southpaw stance. Jake Sifontes coming out in the orthodox stance. When that normally happens, the strength of the rear hand is always there for them. So for the right-handed opponent, his right hand, left-handed opponent, his left hand, you know, it's going to be there just a matter of when. Jake Safantes, a guy who's very light on his feet. Good pendulum step to initiate that lead leg kick. If you notice, Bobby's stance is very bladed, and I think Jake's going to try to take advantage yeah. of that and kick that front leg out, or at least trip him. He liked it. He, he went for the kick, and then he the quick right. You know, Jake is not done, though. He's staying away from Bobby's power side, that left hand. Because, again, he, he's got lightning in a bottle in those hands. Bobby looking to work the range, pulling the jab out there. I'm intrigued. This is sort of setting up to be a bit of a chess match very early, but we haven't seen a lot of this. I like it. Well, and the thing Bobby's going to have to be careful of is, is not to get lulled into following Jake and then have Jake Ooh. catch him on the way in. Because sometimes when you fight a guy who's fast and they go lateral, they go back, you end up just kind of finding yourself chasing them, and then before you know it, they come back into you. You don't expect it. Bobby's got some. Oh! Oh, and Bobby's down. Bobby doing a good job, getting guard, locking up that close guard. A lot of power. Slow, slowing down the pace. Safanta showing, showing some power. And now it's just hang on and survive for these last 90 seconds, right? Well, you know, he's got to try to open up the guard. He's got to do something or at least negate Jake because, again, the judges saw Jake basically put Bobby down with that strike. Yep. So they're going to give him credit for, you know, oh, nice roll by Bobby. Wow. But good job by Jake posting with that left hand. He's taking the back. Can he sink the hooks in? Bobby's fighting those hands. Nice job. Minute left to go in this title fight. Bobby finds himself on the wrong side of town in Jake Stefante's corner. Round one. Nice knee to the body by Jake. Jake's looking to frame with that hand, with the forearm. You, you hear Bobby's corner calling for that underhook and turn. Right in front of us here, Brian. You see Bobby trying to dig for that left underhook. Jake doing a good job tightening the armpit, not letting it happen. Nice knee. Ooh, uh, got to be careful with those knees. Could be a little low. Jake's doing a good job creating some pressure. 20 seconds left to go. Opening round and a good one so far. Jason Fontes. Jake's doing a good job using the head for head pressure, controlling. Angelo Delivered holding his own. There we go. That's what Bobby needed. Some dirty Great boxing job. to get off the cage. Coming down to that final 10 seconds. Turned him around. He caught him with a good strike, too. Good defense by Bobby Angelo there. Last few seconds. Oh, he went for that. He was headhunting there. Really he, nice job there by Bobby Angelo to stem the tide, kind of level the playing field a little bit. Probably lost round one, but momentum-wise, he appears to be on the rise. He, he did well there, but I would say that, you know, you got to be careful going with reckless abandon with Jake because Jake is very comfortable, you know, getting sneaky with grappling. Mm. So set those big strikes up, you know. And it's easier said than done when you're chasing the guy backwards. But, you know, it's easier for Jake to change the level, come back into him, and then execute a takedown or at least slow the tempo down. And you were talking about Bobby Angelo a little bit as we were setting this up for this title fight. He's kind of been out of the game for a little bit, so you shake off a little bit of that rung, uh, you know, um, ring rust, and uh, really not a bad 
round, all things considered. Not at all, especially, you know, he was in a, a you know, quasi-bad position. He kept his composure. He was never in any real danger. Um, you know, I, I think he's got to feel good about that going into round two. And if you're Jake Sapontes, you feel very good about the fact that you were able to transition from ground to standing and control that round for the most part. Great job by our camera guys to bring you all the action in between rounds. Thank you for watching at Stimulus.com. We're live here at Rivers Casino in Schenectady. It's Cage Wars 57, round two of our title fight, Jake Sifontes versus Bobby Angelo. Here we go. Good round. Round one more than likely went to Sifontes. And he wants to attack those legs, but you do have to be careful because, again, you know, you can't take too many of those leg kicks, but if... If he eats it to give you a left hand, it, it could be a bad situation. Well, you can see the wear and tear. I mean, he's oh, yeah. really eating those inside leg, leg kicks. And again, I think that's going to make him blade his stance even more, which will Ooh. allow Jake to attack the outside of that lead leg now. He fainted with the hips, looked to go high with the kick. Angelo taking a little bit of damage, but live right now. He's live. And he's not afraid to engage. No. It's a good fight. You know, Jake doing a good job with the movement, Ooh. though. Oh! Bobby's got the power. It's only going to take one. And he just missed. He connected. He kind of caught one on the end, but then just missed with the counter. And Looking for that trip. Good job turning Safantes back into the cage. Nice knees from Safantes, though, in these clinches. Yeah, every time Safantes gets, gets hit with a shot, he returns fire of his own. And, and you, you hear Bobby's corner yelling circle. Easier said than done. You know, I think Bobby's best course of action here is a circle, and as circling, dirty box out. Both fighters durable. Angelo showing his toughness here. Minute 30 left to go in round number two of this title fight. Good he job escaping again. out the back door. And again, we see Jake wants to be at range. Good oh. job by Bobby throwing that body kick, but again, Jake gets right to the back, brings him to the ground right in front of his corner. And we've seen it time and time again with Angelo, who's been able to get out of these situations by turning opponent around or moving out with a strike. He's got to do that right now or else he's in danger of being down two rounds to nothing. He's looking to fight the hands and turn to his left, but Jake's just doing a good job using his head, you know, creating some pressure on the cage. Angelo's smart, though. He knows his way out. He's just got to try to execute it. Nice knees again, though, by Sapontes. That one hurt a little bit. You see Bobby, you know, covering up the breadbasket right now with that forearm. Look for that trip. Oh, Sapontes brings him down. 45 seconds left Ends to go. Ends up in side mount. Less than a minute. Safantes in the red corner. Black shorts. Bobby Angelo in the blue corner. White shorts. Jake might be looking to isolate that left arm. Dan calling for them to start working. Oh, in the mount. Bobby tries to roll. Jake doing a good job rolling with good him. Good job getting out of it. Good job good by job. Bobby Angelo. Ends up in mount. Oh good my. job. Oh, my. Wow. He's got 10 seconds. Oh. Wow. Good job by Bobby Angelo. What a turn of events at the end of round two. Jake Cifante is defending, though. And wow. Comes, comes up with a big smile. We that, got action. That right there gave the judges something to think about. That's a tough round to score because I don't know if we'll be able to get a replay. I don't know how many of those were real clean, at least three or four. Oh, absolutely, and, and it's it's about what it appears to the judges. You know, you don't know what judge sees what, if there's a ring post somewhere. You know, but just the fact he was attacking like that is going to, you know, weigh in their mind. It's hard to give. Like, right, fans, this is our third and final round. It, it's hard to give him the round after that 30-second flurry, but... You want to talk about a lift, a bolt of electricity, say, a, a yes. Mo a momentum shift for him. You know, and again, you know, Jake came up smiling. It's all part of the game, and he knows that. But that's what Bobby needed to go into this third round if he wants to win. He, <laughs> he, needed, he needed that in the end of that round. Safantis in the red corner. Angelo in the blue. For the 155-pound US MTA title. Both these guys hyped up, getting the crowd into it. Third and final round. Jake using those feints. A little St. Paddy's Day scrap here, Rivers. Thank you all for watching at Stimulus.com. Cage Wars 57, co-main event. Round three. Even fight. Very good fight.
That appeared to have stung him a little bit. Nice kick, good kick by Bobby. But again, he's, he's really taking some abuse in that lead leg. Stefantis just has it, he's got an array of angles that he likes to attack you at. He does, he likes to throw different strikes. You saw him just throw that low lead leg kick after the punch. Inside, outside, inside again. Right now, Bobby Angelo definitely has more of the sense of urgency out of the two. Well, if he's got it, he's got to get to work. He's got two minutes right now. You see him loading that left hand. He feels, oh! he feels that's his, his, his uh, path to victory right now is that heavy left hand. Oh, oh he got nice him. kick. Into the cage right here. What can Jake do with this? And can Bobby defend it? We just got sweat on us, folks. It's that close. We have a lot of time left to go, though. A minute and 55 left to go in this third and final round in a fight that has had a lot of different dramatic twists and turns. Safantis ate a big shot there by Angelo. And then he came and he put him up against the cage. The right and thing to do by Safantis there. Absolutely. Using shoulder bumps against cage, using head pressure, using some knees, you know, slowing the pace down again. I mean, it's just really intelligent fighting by Safantis. Bobby's got that right underhook, but Jack, uh, yeah, Jake's trapping the arm. Angelo wants to separate, and he wants to land a big one. Ooh. And, oh. I, and I mentioned that earlier, that's that trip. You know, <laughs> trying to take that lead leg. When you're bladed like that, it's easier to take that lead leg out from you. This is a great fight. Minute left to oh, go. Oh, rear push to the face. Just out of the way, Bobby, just enough. This is high level stuff, Will. <laughs> Jake very aware of, of what Bobby's trying to accomplish here with that left hand. I don't know if Safantis is trying to rope a dope him in a little bit, but he, he, Safantis he's, appears he's to breathing. be. He is breathing. He's breathing. He is. And he Angelo, wants to get this to the ground. Angelo's Less got than a minute seconds. left. He's looking to land one or two more big shots. He lands it right nice in the combo. Left hand. Safantis backed up against the cage. Angelo with a kick to the body, followed by a left. Bobby Angelo has put Jake, pushed Jake Cifantes further than anybody yet. This has been one hell of a third round. Still 30, 30 seconds, seconds left to left. go. Come on, get him off the cage. Get him off. Come on, Big Dan, get him off. Uh, he's doing enough right now, you know, throwing those ah. knees to the body. You know, I mean, oh, 20 title seconds. fight, though, Will. 20 seconds. Dan's, Dan's get him coming off. in. Dan's coming in. 10 seconds left. That Bobby was... looking for that roll. Oh, and he rolled him. Nice job, Bobby oh, Angelo. He's going to end up in top. <laughs> and he's he's going to make Jake pay for it. I want two more rounds. Man. That was good. That was good. I don't know if it was enough, but holy moly. That was a great fight. Hell of a fight. Great That's fight a... for both these guys. Without a doubt, highly entertaining, high-level stuff. It's in the hands of the judges. I wouldn't want to score it. I mean, you do say two more rounds, that's not possible in amateur, but if we could have saw two more rounds, that would have really proved interesting. His tra Angelo's trajectory was sky high. He dominated the second half of that third round. I just don't know if it was enough. I, I agree, you know, and the big thing is, a lot of times those leg but, kicks, they'll, they'll kind of, you know, load up on you at the end. It really didn't stop Bob, which was good. I will say this, it, this this feels like whoever gets the title, the, the challenger is a... <laughs> It's a, cl it's a 1A, 1B situation, 1 and 1A situation here. I think Stefantis did just enough over the course of the nine minutes, you know? Agreed. But Angelo landed some big body shots, or some big power shots, had him on the ropes. After being away for as long as Bobby's been, I mean, that, that's a win. Yeah, absolutely. No shame in that for either fighter. That was a fun fight. You know, to lose the first round and a half or two rounds and then come back and, and really be put in the kind of pressure, you know, that seems like, that's almost like a Nate Diaz thing to do, you know? It's it just is. Kind of, and it's and, and that, like that's why Nate does better yes. in those later rounds when he yes. can just drag it into deep water. That was good. I enjoyed That was fun. Oh. All right, we hear well, we big, we hear big, big Dan. We hear Big Dan in the background. This is a split decision. Well, we know there's going to be a little drama here. Do you think? Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get a round of applause for what is easily fight of the night. <laughs> and as a result, we have a split decision. Judge number one scores the fight 29-28 in favor of the red corner.
Judge number two scores the fight 29-28 in favor of the blue corner. <laughs> Judge number three scored the fight 29-28 for your winner by way of split decision, Bobby Wow! 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 Wow, okay. I can't say I, I mean, our reaction is shock, but he, he dominated arguably the most important two minutes of the fight, even though his domination was short-lived. Agreed, and, and you know, again, that goes to what the judges are seeing and, and what they see as good technique, wow. what they see as damage. Uh, you know, I mean, congratulations to Bobby Angelo. I, I feel that this was a fight that Jake Cifantes needed. I feel like he needed to be challenged to really elevate himself. That was tremendous, and there's the champ. I'll tell you, it was the last 30 seconds of round two where he turned, you know, he turned over and uh, he turned over Cifantes and just did just enough damage in the final 30 seconds to win over because he was losing the majority of the second round up until the last 30 seconds. Round three, he was fantastic. I, I can't be upset with that decision. Hopefully these guys can run it back. That was a great fight. That was a great fight.